naturally, and again, it's your system one, your chimp, mm -hmm. which is comparing you to others. Right. We do this all the time. Mm -hmm. And again, it's natural, but it's not necessarily helpful. Yeah. So I'm starting to look out there around colleagues or around other people in the world and thinking, well, they're better than me. And that might damage my self-esteem without me knowing all the inner workings that are going on in that person's head, all the, all the things that are happening for that person. The question is, from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Rich. And the question is, how can I improve my self-esteem? And, and I'm not sure if that's a personal request, <laughs> but it's just a yeah, question. Yeah, this is that... not this is, we're not this is not like a coaching therapy type. No, session. although maybe I need to. Uh, maybe you can alert me to the fact that I should. Well, I think it's worth perhaps, firstly, just saying what self-esteem is. Yeah. Um, and it's self-esteem is different from self-confidence. Confident self-confidence is more about what you believe your abilities to be in a given situation moment you know, sort right. of environment. Um, whereas self-esteem is more about how you value yourself. How right. Do you, how do you see yourself? And presumably that's at sort of two levels, not only how you value or see yourself, but whether or not you need some external validation for that, how others see you too. Well, yeah, or how you perceive others see you. Okay. Right. right. So that's so that's quite interesting, isn't it? So it's it's like your view of your your own self-worth, mm -hmm. if you like. Now, it depends how you're getting your self-worth, doesn't it? And what you're pinning it on. I think if you go right back, self-esteem, it's really natural, not necessarily helpful, but natural, that you might have self-esteem wobbles or worries. Right. Yeah? Right. And the reason why I think, think that's natural is if you look at how our brains work, and you've got what is often called system one fast and system thinking. two. Yeah. yeah, fast and slow thinking, or, or known or emotional as emotional and rational. Emotional and rational, or known as uh, human and chimp and all that stuff, Steve Peters. Yeah. Then act, actually, a lot of what your brain is trying to keep you safe with is using the system one or the chimp. So the emotional stuff. So this sounds a bit weird, but what it's trying to do is to say, don't beat your chest too much. Don't show off too much. Right. Um, don't get, you know, too too over um, pleased with yourself because things might go wrong. Right. So so that sort of behavior, your, your emotional system, your chimp, whatever you want to call it, um, is trying to sort of make sure you don't do that. So you stay in accordance with the norms that are around us for most people, not everyone, right. the norms that are around us, so you stay part of the group, so you stay part of the tribe and you don't get pushed out, you don't show yourself up in some sort of way should things go wrong. So actually for your self-esteem not to be super, super high, but for it to dip sometimes or for it to be low is is quite natural, Right. just not necessarily helpful. Okay. So the, the fluctuations in esteem then, self-esteem, will be because of thoughts or feelings around doubting yourself around particular situations? Yeah. So one of the things that we all do, I know mm -hmm. I've done, and I think you see this a lot in business, and I think you see this a lot in all walks of life, is that self-esteem is often put closely with achievements. Mm -hmm. So if I achieve things or look like I'm achieving things, therefore my self-esteem goes up. So am I getting promoted? Right. Have I, did I receive an award at the company awards ceremony? Right. Did I um, achieve a target? Did I finish a project? Did I score all the goals? Did whatever, whatever, yeah. right? So those achievements might build my self-esteem. Right. But is that real? Mm -hmm. Because if it's based on achievements and if I don't win an award, and I've experienced this, with people that we work with when they come back from end of year award ceremonies and they're really upset because they didn't win an award when mm -hmm. they thought that they would, then actually if we don't win something, which to a degree can be outside of our control, right. then that can affect your self-esteem. If your self-esteem is heavily linked to achievements in life yes, and status that you might try and... So for me, gain. that's what I would label as external validation because we're, we're looking to get that recognition, not just for ourselves, but recognition within an environment of our peers yep. or, you know, in a work setting um, because that validation that we attach importance to helps our esteem. And that's a really interesting 
question or point, Rob, because I think we all naturally, and again, it's your system one, your chimp, mm -hmm. which is comparing you to others. Right. So validation from others or comparing yourself to others. We do this all the time. Mm -hmm. And again, it's natural, but it's not necessarily helpful. Yeah. So, uh, y you know, you see that where I'm starting to look out there around colleagues or around other people in the world and thinking, well, they're better than me. Yeah. And that might damage my self-esteem without me knowing all the inner workings that are going on in that person's head, all, sure. the, all the things that are happening for that person. Sure. I'm just basing it on what I perceive, which is I think they're better than I am, and therefore that could push me down. And again, it's natural, yes. but it's not necessarily helpful. So I think comparisons with others, we have to be really, really careful of because it can leave us feeling inadequate. Or the other way, you might assume that you're better than everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could leave you... You become self-confident. It's not about esteem anymore. You become overly confident. You could become arrogant, couldn't yeah, you? And yeah, you yeah. could even then start to tip into too much, um, you know, belief in yourself, yeah. which can start, if it goes too far, could end up in hubris and, and things like that, which can be quite dangerous. So what's interesting then, if I get back to the question posed, how can I improve my self-belief? One of the, or sorry, self-esteem. One of the key things here is let's not go looking for external validation because that's a slippery slope. Let's not go down the route of trying to compare my achievements or sense of achievements with other people because that's a slippery slope. Yep. So improving self-esteem must be an internal thing then. It's about, it's about attempting to try to help myself yeah. with a recognition and, and remembering, well, I have done that. I, I have done this. And I can put an anchor, I yeah. guess, attached to those things and to I, those memories. One of the things that I found helpful um, when working with people was, what about your personal values? What are mm -hmm. your values? Right. So if someone's struggling with self-esteem, let's go back to almost like, say, get a blank sheet of paper and work out. So what are your values as a person? Mm -hmm. Who, how do you want to live your life? Right. Who what's do you want to be? Yeah, what's important to you? So if you write some stuff out, and what's interesting is when I've done this exercise with people, you tend to get quite similar stuff, mm -hmm. right? So people tend to write out things like, I want to be um, thoughtful. Okay. I want to be helpful. Yeah, I want to be kind. I want, yeah, yeah, I want to be kind. Go on, Rob, give us a few others. Well, I want to be well regarded or accepted in yeah. whatever the peer group is or friendship group yeah um what else i think uh people would say that they they want to have a sort of an acceptance be accepted by people but accept themselves for who they are yes yeah, so be kind to yourself yeah be kind to yourself yeah, yeah. but you, you tend to get as as you're listing there some relatively similar things right Right. People don't normally say, uh, I want to be scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to doubt myself. Yeah. Um, they, so they say that sort of list of, you know, I want to have integrity, compassion. I want to be accepted. Yeah. I want to believe I'm enough. I want to be kind. I want to be calm. I want to be all that good stuff that most of us would say. Sure. So you start to work then. OK, so what are the values that come out of that? And that then is who you want to be. OK. Now, really, interestingly, if you go and read some of the work on on some of this stuff, um, and Steve Peters is, you know, who wrote the Chimp Paradox, really good on this because what he talks about in that, and I've found it to be true when working with people, is when you write that list, that is actually who you are. Okay. What's happening is that your system one and your chimp are getting in the way and stopping you from being calm, assertive, compassionate, kind, all those things. Right. So that is who you are. So if you go back to that, and you start to say, oh, from that blank sheet of paper, and I've done this with several people to work with, that's who you want to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So then let's start to think about what practices can I have in the week to remind myself of what my values are and how I want to act and behave. Okay. So you're starting to, you're starting to pin your self-esteem on who you are, how you're thinking, how you're acting and behaving. Right, okay. Rather than on, am I as good as that person? Which is very useful because... As you say, it's linked completely to being really clear about a set of values and then doing the follow-up exercise, which is how do I need to behave in order to achieve those values, yeah. maintain those values. The, and the interesting thing with that is you you are, we all are, 
going to fall foul of um, ourselves and our system one our chimp because there's going to be times in the week when yeah. something happens yeah. and you react. You have an emotional reaction. Yeah, you have a chimp reaction. The emotional reaction is always first, always strong. Yeah, And it's going to happen. Yeah. So it's not beating yourself up when it does, but mm-hmm. it's noticing it, reflecting on it, and then thinking, how can I improve the way I react to it? You know, and I, I've, I had one recently where um, one of my values is about bringing... Can I bring the question to the table? Yeah. Right. I don't have to have the answer, but can I bring the question to the table? Right. And I found recently I've had to feel like I need to provide an answer and then noticing that and pulling back and thinking it's not I don't have to provide the answer. Okay. I'm yeah. just trying to bring the trying to bring the question. Be curious. Right. So I think that's one thing that can help self esteem is to try and work out what your values are. Okay. And it it's interesting how little how few people have done that exercise well it needs to be a conscious exercise doesn't it yeah. so you know it seems to be that you either are aware enough that you think oh i haven't done that i need to do it or somebody triggers that so yeah. you know in conversation as you've described okay um i think the second thing to think about is can you surround yourself with really good people mm-hmm. who are like you okay who have similar values to you okay because if you're working in a culture that one of the one of the keys that you're working in a culture that's not right for you is actually the people around you have probably got different values. Mm-hmm. The organisation might have different values, which therefore might make you feel like you don't fit in, okay. which therefore might make you feel like you're not good enough, mm-hmm. which therefore might lower your self-esteem. So, And we tend to do this, I think, naturally in life at times. We try and surround ourselves with people that are like us, yeah, yeah. that have similar values to us. Now, we might not consciously think about it in that way, but if we were to consciously think about it, who are those people that give you energy? Who are those people you feel connected to rather than those that drain you and take your energy away and leave you with that feeling in your stomach that something's wrong? Right. Because that's a key notification that a value line has been crossed for you. Something's not right. Which, of course, brings us all the way back to self-esteem because you might, you might in an instance like that, you might recognize that feeling as a bit of self-doubt. I, I don't fit in. Don't know why. Right, I just don't feel like I fit in here. I've got no clue why that is. It yeah. may be as, and I'm not saying that doing a values exercise is a straightforward thing, but as straightforward as a mismatch of values, as you've described. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think those the 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 other one as well that you made me think of then, Rob, is is about purpose. Right. So values. Have you got good people around you that are similar, mm-hmm. but also. Have you got some form of purpose in what you're doing? Right. Because self-esteem can come from purpose. Mm-hmm. So am I working on something that I deem to be valuable for me, for the organization, for the world, yeah. for the community, whatever? It doesn't, what, doesn't yeah, matter. Whatever the connection whatever is. Whatever yeah. it is for you. Mm-hmm. But if you believe what you're doing to be worthwhile and your contribution towards it to be worthwhile, inherently that's going to help your self-belief. Definitely, yeah. Whereas if, if you've got the opposite going on, mm-hmm. you don't see the point. Yeah, you're just drifting. You know? It seems meaningless because you can't attach any meaning to the purpose because you haven't had a purpose realisation or a purpose conversation or done an exercise on it. Then, therefore, your self-belief can suffer Yeah, because what, what, what's the point of this? What's the point of me? And away we go. So I think purpose becomes really important as well. Mm-hmm. A purpose can be anything you want it to be. So, you know, it might very well be that <laughs> I, I work with someone in a company we work with who's really clear. He says, my purpose is the shortest possible route to the largest, biggest bank account. Okay. Right? Right. So I can provide the life for my family I, I want to. Sure. Well, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's Sounds like my second daughter. <laughs> but, you know, very close parallel to what she wants to do. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. No. Now, some people would also go, oh, I want to help the world yeah. in some way or help people or animals or whatever it might be. Yeah. That's also fine. Absolutely. So there's no judgment on what that purpose is. Yeah. But if you're working with purpose, it will help yourself. For well, the importance is having a purpose, knowing what it is, being really clear about it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then, because then it's again easier to line your values up to it. And if you can line your values up to it, then you can yeah. far easier understand what behaviours are required to help you to do that. And, and and all of that will have the impact of protecting, uh, whether that's the right word or not, your self-esteem building. Your self-esteem. Right. And as well, 
if you if we can, and we all fall foul of this, we all might do some work on it and then trip up and fall mm-hmm. over or pick ourselves up and try again. Mm-hmm. But if if you can work those things out, the values, the purpose, surround yourself with good people, what you might find is you're comparing yourself less right. to others. Yes, and that well. external validation, the importance of it diminishes. Because you're sure about who, more about who you are right, and who you want to be. And you've got some self-acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Next time on The Question Is... So why do we procrastinate? We procrastinate because our brain, in very simple terms, is going... That looks really scary. This looks really safe. You know, so writing this report for the boss, which I could completely screw up and get wrong and make a complete, you know, idiot of myself, even though it's really important to me, feels terrifying. But this video of cats, that's hilarious. That's very comfortable. To find out how Thinking Focus can unlock the potential within your organisation, go to www.thinkingfocus.com where you'll discover more about the work we do, helping our clients increase productivity and enable change.